Hello and welcome back! If you follow the channel, you already know that my HP 9825, famously used by Mr. Fancy Pants in the HP catalog, recently died from a power supply failure that caused an overvoltage. The computer died, that is, not Mr. Fancy Pants, whom we found very alive and still very kicking as Keysight's principal metrologist emeritus. Anyhow, the 5 volts became 13 volts, which is a big ouchie if you are a TTL chip. The HP 9025 has been languishing on my bench for a while, eclipsed by even more precious Apollo hardware. Last time we worked on it, we repaired the keyboard display assembly, which uses the spectacular HDSP 2000 dot matrix LED chips. And after we secured new old displays and changed a whole bunch of bad chips, it finally boots fine on its own with all of its original boards. But we are not quite done. We have not yet looked at the two last boards, the tape drive and its controller. And we can already tell they don't quite work properly. Alright, so last stretch for the 9825. Uh, it's all working except the tape drive. And the tape drive is this, at least the largest board. It has lots and lots of ICs, um, about 40 ICs. And probably we have five of them that are dead. And I, I am all equipped with the pants, and then I have Eric, so I have to be successful. And I have made a, a good DC100 tape, I think, uh, with the plastic band. Ah yes, lest I forget, before you can even attempt to use the HP tape drives, you have to refurbish the infamous DC100 tape cartridges and recode the equally infamous GUI tape drive capstans. I have other episodes on the subject, accurately named Tape Salad, but this is already all done, so we are good to go. So this has just been renovated, so we have a tape here, and so far the tape doesn't even move, uh, so I am going to look at um, very simple signals. There is one that says go, motor on, and then drive the whole servo thing for the motor. And this is the command latch on the I.O. and there's one that says run stop. So I am on latch, run stop and go and I should hopefully see a go signal. Okay, I think we got something here if I turn it on. We get a latch, so it tried to address the tape. Uh, but I see no go signal at all. And that's looking at the output. That and much. if I do rewind, step load list nothing is dead okay so looks like we have a more fundamental problem than we thought if i do rew it should rewind we just tested it on the other machine and i get the run light so here we have the run light on and it's stuck so it looks like the cpu is hanging waiting for the board to answer so let's check if the handshake between the two is even working. On the HP 9825, the CPU talks to its interfaces by reading or writing to a specific register on the card, register 5. And one of the first circuits is a decoder that detects just that. It should give us read 5 and write 5 pulses if the board is receiving the commands from the CPU. Let's see if that works. So we are seeing some activity on the board, uh, that's when it's addressed, that's when there's a transaction and those are read5 and write5, the command and the status lines. So if I do reset, I get the clean reset, that's fine. If I do rewind, it's doing R5, which is trying to read the status, that's why it's, get, it's getting stuck, so it's not Something is not happening that it expects, but at least it addressed the board. Mm -hmm. Let me try to trigger on write 5, see if it gives it any commands. And trigger the model. Let me do another reset. And then we do rewind. And we expect it to give it a rewind command, but it doesn't re-trigger. Nothing. So it's not... So it never, ne tries never tries to give it a rewind command. No write 5. Your theory, Eric, is that it's seeing something on the status it doesn't like and never right. even attempts to... Right, so presumably it's trying to write, maybe clear out some other latches. Mm. 
So it tries to clear the latch and then it checks the status byte a bunch of times and that bit's never going to the state it wants and so then it just hangs there forever. <laughs> Testing Eric's theory is easy, we just need to look at the status bits that the CPU is trying to read. They are all here on U16. That's many logic signals, so we are going to use the digital inputs of our DSO scope. Okay, reset. Okay, blunk. Reset. It's only virtual logic, we all have ones on our whole latches. Hi. Yeah. And Let me do rewind. Here. So no Ooh, things stop. happen on rewind. Okay, we got something. We got data. So bus two would be the value of data that's from the status register latch. So presumably that means something. Okay, we can decode that. Eric, you think that's a suspicious status byte? That is very suspicious. You know, can you interpreting 00010010, which is actually the contrary of that? So we see. 0010, or I'm sorry, 0001, but that's inverted. So it's so actually 1110. So we have beginning of tape, which we are not at. I shouldn't be on. Correct. Servo fail. Which, well, my server might have failed. Cartridge out is definitely in. <laughs> this one doesn't even go through the latch. It's grounded. Is this one on our record gap? That is also a one. That is also a one. Mm -hmm. That is a zero. That is correct. But this doesn't go through the latch. No, so anything that goes that's connected to the latch is one. Very suspicious. Suspicious. Uh, 9308, what the heck is that? Take it out and test it. Here we have the masters at work, Master Eric, desoldering a suspicious chip, latches off, and it's on Master Ken's test setup. Master Ken, do your magic. Okay. Is so it a good latch or is it a bad latch? It is a very bad latch. So it's turned into an AND gate. Oh, any one input would turn all the other. No, all on. all of them high turns the up all the outputs high. Oh, that's weird. Very weird. On the on the good news, the clear input will still pull it low, hmm. but the clock just pulls it low temporarily, and it's not latching the data. So okay. I think uh, we may have accidentally invented a field programmable gate. <laughs> <laughs> Fusible one. Yes. Okay, well, good. Uh, so we have some new ones from Marcel because Marcel has everything. Yes, and I've, I've tested these. They, okay. they latch. Can you show one that latches? Okay. Okay, so this one. Now we have our, our clear. We'll clear it. And then our clock line. You can see that we can latch data into the latch. Oh, okay, this works. All right. And then we can clear the latch. Okay, so that's a good one. So the, the, this one, very nice latching action. That's what we want to see. Sweet. Okay, so Eric has resorted a chip. Right there. You, you want to turn it on? Let's yeah, see. let's turn it on. Give it a shot. So this is all connected here. The probes are connected the same way as before. Oh, it's unhappy. Yeah, so let's try the same command here. No, no, it's, it's uh, something is not uh, good with it. Maybe if I do. Okay, I'll try. It's, it's hanging. Yeah. It has the run light hanging. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yeah. Oh, but I don't have the tape. Oh, okay. Yeah! Hey! That's promising. But it, it did hang. So what might have happened that when it tries this is it looks for the autoload file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do a reset and do rewind. Yeah, it hangs it. So something's not quite happening. So we have another chip that's bad. Um, so we must figure out what happened. Okay, yeah. but we have progress. Small progress. Okay, well we fix something. Later. So I have Eric. And Master Sorry. Ken, hard at work trying to figure what's wrong with our um, tape. 
while we are monkeying, uh, I'm work, monkeying with Mike on the Apollo tra uh, transponder. So we're going through here and uh, trying to see what the program is doing when it gets stuck in the state. So we're trying to rewind and it started but then it immediately stopped and the tape is no longer moving. Right. And it's caught in a loop somewhere and so the idea is to look at the logic analyzer, to look at the address and data buses to see where it's getting stuck. Right. Try and match that up with the ROM and, uh, and figure out why it doesn't like the tape right now. Yeah, so where we're, we thought that would be the fastest way to just to... Exactly. Instead so of trying to figure out the missing signal, try to look at the, what the processor is doing and see if it tells us where it's stuck and what it's missing. What is it telling you? What is it telling me? It's telling me a whole bunch of numbers in octal. So we can see addresses here in the address bus, data on the data bus. So a number that's like uh, 20733, for example, that corresponds to memory address in ROM. And uh, Ken here has lined that up with the actual program listing itself. And so we can tell where it's getting stuck. And we found that it's in this code called msbet, which measures the distance from the beginning or end of tape. So it's basically a fairly complicated code that tries to look, go 30 inches, sees if it hits the beginning or end of tape hole, measures the distance, tries to figure out where it is. And we expect, we think it's always getting stuck with the beginning end of tape mark and getting confused. So back in our tape salad episodes, we saw that the beginning and end of tapes are marked with a complex pattern of small holes in the tape. It could be that the optical detection of the hole is bad in the drive itself, or that some logic on the board involved with hole detection is bad. I'm, th I'm saying U15, Okay. flip-flop here. Um, U15? Other people suspect it might be the yeah, so signal it, from it, the tape drive. It might be the signal from the tape drive or this, I don't know. So we first suspected the overvoltage fried the lamp in our tape drive, uh, but it turns out our very advanced drive had been upgraded to infrared LEDs, so we saw nothing. Fortunately, the camera is sensitive to it, and we could see it in the footage. So the LED is fine, it's probably not the drive itself. So you found the culprit? Uh, we believe so. Uh, there is a flip-flop uh, right here and that is supposed to latch when the hole detect gets asserted. And so there's two outputs here. There's the Q bar, which is the inverted output, and this is the Q output, which is the non-inverted output. And one of those is not working. So, so this is the bad chip that I put into a test setup and it should flip-flop but nothing is happening. If you look very closely, you can see that the oh, yeah. there's one light here that is is slightly illuminated. Oh, so it, it's, it's very sick. It's, it's very unhappy. Okay. So we exchanged the bad flip-flop with one that was properly behaved and was actually flipping and flopping. But that still did not fix our problem, until Eric made another bad chip discovery. You found another bad chip? We have another bad chip. Which one is it? This one is the AT20. It is a one-shot pulse generator. This guy here on the schematic takes the analog tax signal coming in and turns it into a digital pulse train on the output. So take a look at the oscilloscope screen. I'm going to spin this with my finger. I should probably turn it on first. This is all live. So I can spin this with my finger here. Yeah. So that's the tachometer. It's an optical pickup basically on the capstan. So it senses motion of the capstan. Here's the input signal. And as you can see, there's no output signal. It's a pole zero. And it's at one point something volts, right? Yeah. So it should be a pulse train and it's not. It's just so it's not even a zero or a one, it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, so I so, saw so the processor doesn't know that the thing is spinning and it says stalled and that's it. And unfortunately, it's this old Signetics chip uh, that I don't have in my collection, so I have to get it from eBay. And that's going to do it for today, right? We're kind of stuck. I think we're stuck for now. Much later. So Eric is back, and you've replaced the chip? I have. Uh, it took a while, and you can see my hair is longer. So <laughs> replace yeah, that you've grown a beard? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. And, 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 did it, did it help? Oh, oh, I hear. Yeah, 
So the drive is moving now. Mm -hmm. A uh, error 60, and that just means that the file it's trying to load is a null file. So it's just the first file on the tape here. Is, so it is tried to read the tape. So it tried to read the tape. Which is a huge progress. This is much, the first time this has ever, ever happened. Progress. Oh yeah, this, okay. is, this, is, this is great because it means that we've closed the servo loop, right? right? We're getting the tack signal, we're controlling the motor speed correctly. Uh, in fact, let's try a rewind. Okay, and yeah, that yeah. was successful. So it just rewound the tape and fast forwarded it. Can you do it again? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have life in the tape. I thought you would format it a little bit of it and could read the or could read some tracks on it. Yeah, let me let me try and read some some tracks. Mm -hmm. Forget the command though. Oh, <laughs> I, I I did too. Um, T list. T list. T list. Tape list. Oh, it means you have written to the tape. So you were able to initialize it. There, there are some files on it, but these are all null files. Okay, uh, let's see if we can store a file on the tape. And if that's the case, we might be done. Maybe. I just wrote a very small program and loaded it on the tape. So right now if I do run, nothing happening because I have no programs. Now try to load. It's LDF, load file zero. All right, it read it. It says victory, it ran it. That's what the program is supposed to do. So that was it. Tape works. Tape works, everything works. So we put it back together and hope for the best. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, that was our last known fault and we repaired it. We survived our HP slash Apollo 13 disaster. It's back on Earth with us, all working. Time for a little celebration. So the 1925 is alive again and we have put on the top a lineup of all the chips that we found were bad and if you start at least from the right those were the two memory cards we have two uh, intel chips that went bad the second one um, uh, can decap so it doesn't exist anymore and reverse engineered it actually then we had a one bad ROM and then a various bunch of logic. Uh, the next one up is KDP and we had all the HP uh, LED chips that went bad. Lucky I broke a couple of them to, to, to make good pictures of the inside so they were imagined in another four. And then a whole bad uh, bunch of logic chips. So Eric, if you looked at them, there's Signetics. Texas. Yeah, there's a bunch of different manufacturers. It's not just one. Not one particular series more than the other. We had LS chips go bad, we had standard chips go bad. And that's what you, uh, Eric, you just took out of the tape controller. Right. Yeah, Signetics, Fairchild, all, all the different manufacturers. Uh, oh, Fairchild too. So it's not that much process dependent. Just don't put 14 volts on, on your TTL. It's no good. So all in all, it was 29 bad chips in the thing. So finally, yeah, our 9825 is back. Actually, not only this one, but my three other ones that we fixed mainly off camera while we were all warmed up. One last short but important episode still to come though, as I'll have to tell you how I made an imitation HP crowbar circuit that I put on each and every one of my now four functioning HP 9825s so they don't get fried by their power supplies again. See you then!